Damien here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, now, my last name is Parker, uh, and you might have heard of this little pen company that has the same name. Uh, they've been around for a while. Uh, you know, my second fountain pen I ever owned was a Parker Urban that I used almost exclusively for a couple of years. Uh, I had a, a bottle of black Parker Quink that I uh, kept on my desk at work, and I remember how cool I thought it was to, to fill up that little terrible converter that came with that pen. Uh, you know, at the time, I really liked it a lot, uh, but as I became more exposed to pens and saw more pens, uh, I came to realize it really wasn't the greatest pen, at least for me. So I tried other Parker pens in an effort to find one that I really liked. You know, I really wanted to have a pen that I loved from my namesake company. Um, I own a few. I have a, a Reflex, a Sonnet, a Vacumatic, and a Vector, uh, and I've even reviewed a 51, none of which really hit home for me. But it wasn't for a lack of trying. So. Today, I try again, and the pen that I'm going to be taking a look at is the Parker Dual Fold Maxima. I'm going to be taking a look at the parts and the features of the Dual Fold Maxima, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and stay tuned because at the end of this review, uh, I have a very special giveaway for you. Uh, it's not a pen, it's something else, but I think it's something that you will enjoy. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I don't have just one dual fold Maxima, I have two right here. Uh, while at the, the DC Pen Show this year, my good friend Andreas gave me these two Parker pens to check out. Uh, and I've had them way too long. Uh, I need to get these back to him uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, th I'm really backed up on reviews right now that I need to get to here, so I might be posting a little bit more often to catch up on some things that I've committed to get out from companies who provide me with items. So you might just see more than one review a week here for a little while, we'll see. Um, but what that does mean is that you might be seeing some things with additional giveaways as well. So that's something nice. So I have the burgundy right here, and then I have the black uh, that are basically, from what I could tell, identical other than the color and then the nibs on here. Uh, one is a medium, I believe, on the black one, uh, and then the one here on the red is an oblique. Uh, and so I think we'll just take a look here at the, uh, at the burgundy because I think it shows up a little bit better on camera. Uh, both of these pens were manufactured in the late 1950s. Uh, at that time, Parker offered seven different versions of the dual fold. Um, there was the, uh, the lady, the slim fold, the junior, the demi, the standard, the senior, and then the top of the line back then was this Maxima. Uh, this pen is made from resin, uh, and it has gold-plated trim. Uh, this specific pen has been fully restored and uh, is in really good condition. Uh, the body of the pen, for being as old as it is, uh, shows very little in the way of wear and tear. There's some lettering here that probably doesn't show up as nice as it did originally, but other than that, it's in very nice condition. Uh, the, the black one ha hasn't been restored and has a little bit more visible, visible wear. Uh, but for a pen that's older than I am, uh, it's in great shape. So let's actually start by taking a look here at the finial. On the end of the cap uh, is a pointed plastic insert that matches the color of the rest of the pen. Uh, it transitions into the clip band, which has a little stair step down to the clip. Uh, the clip and the band are all one piece, which I like. Uh, the clip itself is the traditional Parker Arrow clip, which I really do care for. It's very functional, uh, but it is a bit on the short side. Uh, the cap angles up, and then we have the cap band. The gold-plated cap band doesn't have any branding on it at all, uh, only this lined design, which fills the circumference of the band. There is a very small step down to the barrel, which is relatively straight until about this point here where it tapers down to a rounded point. Uh, and then actually at the end of the pen here, there's a little air hole. So this pen cannot be used as an eyedropper. Uh, you know, it's fairly tough to see on this pen, but uh, on the barrel, it's actually engraved with the Parker Arrow logo. And then it says Parker Ma Maxima and made in England. The cap twists off to reveal this very nice 14 karat gold nib. You can see the iconic Parker arrow, arrow integrated into the nib. 
Uh, and that I really like that the uh, breather hole on this nib is placed directly in the middle of the arrow stamping. Uh, that would have bugged me if it was off by a bit, but it's not. Uh, it says 14K Parker England and then the number 50, which indicates the sizing of this nib. This is a number uh, 50 nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, if you don't have much experience with oblique nibs, uh, an oblique is ground so that the tip of the nib makes contact with the paper correctly when the pen is actually rotated in your hand. Uh, the stub nib is ground at an angle, and there's actually two types of oblique nibs. There is a, a left oblique and a right oblique. Uh, this one here is a left oblique, uh, which means uh, that the, the nib angles down, uh, down to the left, actually, when you're looking at it this way. I was looking at it backwards and it didn't make sense. Uh, but it's when you're actually looking at the nib that it's going down to the left. Uh, and then the uh, a right oblique goes the other direction, down and to the right, when it's facing you. Uh, and that the right and uh, or left oblique dictates whether or not you need to twist the pen either clockwise or counterclockwise to use it correctly. Uh, but I'll show that a little bit more in the writing sample. Uh, the section is not concave and doesn't have a flare at the end. Uh, it's very slightly angled. We're only talking about, you know, like less than a millimeter from here to here. Uh, and then the section transitions into the cap threads, which aren't sharp at all. Uh, and while I find the dual fold to be very comfortable in the hand, uh, you know, I kind of wish the section did have a little bit of, of flare at the end. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post very securely, uh, and the cap is plenty light enough so that you really can, it's easy to use the pen uh, posted. Uh, overall, the pen is fairly light as well, but not so light that it doesn't feel like a quality writing instrument. Uh, and also, the cap doesn't add an inordinate amount of length to the pen at all either. Uh, the pen came with an aerometric converter. Now, um, I'm actually unsure if you could re re remove this and use cartridges. Since this pen uh, is on loan, I didn't want to pull it apart. I, I, but I believe that you could take that out and then use this with cartridges as well. Uh, on the side, actually, of the converter housing, uh, it's stamped Parker and then says Parker Pen Company, London, England. And then finally it says to fill pressed ribbed bar at least five times. Uh, you know, who needs a manual when you have your instructions written right there on the side of the pen? But yes, in order to fill this pen, you press down the bar, uh, insert it into the ink, and then release it. It's filled right now, so I don't want to press it. So, have I found the Parker pen I love? You know, in general, I I'm not much of a vintage guy. I, I have nothing against vintage pens. I just haven't found a great deal of vintage pens that really do anything for me. Uh, but that doesn't mean I won't quit looking for one that does fit my tastes. Um, I, I will say that this Parker Dual Fold Maxima comes very close. Uh, I like the size. Uh, it's comfortable on the hand and it's, uh, it's not a small pen. Uh, a large number of vintage pens tend to be a bit on the small side. Uh, and while this isn't necessarily huge, it doesn't feel small. Uh, you know, it's a little larger and thicker than a Pilot Metro. Uh, now, I, on, for this specific pen, writing with an oblique tib, nib takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, you know, I have a tendency to rotate my pens a bit in my hand, so while I don't currently own any pens with oblique nibs, uh, it's something that I might uh, that might actually fit well with my writing style. So uh, I might just need to uh, get a grind on one of my existing pens at an upcoming pen show. But in regard to this pen, you know, in the end, it doesn't necessarily excite me. You know, I, I like it, but I'm not in love with it. So I haven't found my Parker. Uh, but it is very nice, and there, there is nothing wrong with it. It's really solely based on personal taste, uh, that it is a, a high-quality pen. Uh, that, uh, you know, I, I've been tempted, actually, by one of the modern Parker Dual Fold Big Reds. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of pens on my wish list right now, but that one might uh, is one that I might need to check out. Uh, that might be my Parker. We'll see. So, thanks again. Go out to Andreas for the loan of these pens, this maroon as well as this black. Uh, that I appreciate it. 
you know, you might actually be seeing more of Andreas in the near future, that uh, he's been considering starting up a YouTube channel of his own to review pens and books, kind of focusing mainly on the Spanish language market, uh, that he feels that there isn't a great deal of Spanish language content out there for fountain pens and would like to change that. So I'm looking forward to see what he creates. Okay, in regard to the giveaway that I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier this week, my channel hit a bit of a milestone. It topped 1 million views, which kind of blows me away. Uh, and to celebrate that occasion, I wanted to give something away that I'd been saving for a special occasion. And that would be a full, unopened bottle of Olami, Olami Petrol Ink. You know, when this ink came out, I purchased two of them, uh, you know, and I thought that it once uh, it became a little more difficult to obtain, it might be fun to give away. So. I'm giving it away. Um, if you would care to be entered in this drawing, all you need to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment in YouTube in regard to a comment topic. You know, I think that over time I, I've done well to increase the variety of reviews and the variety of topics on my channel. Um, what are some of the things that you would like to see me cover or cover more of in the future? You know, I haven't run out of ideas. Believe me, I have a, a long backlog log of things I need to get to. But I would be interested to hear what type of things that you would like to see more of in the future. Uh, the comment topic is not required. It's just a suggestion. Uh, today is Saturday, December 9th, 2017, and you have until the end of day on Tuesday, the 12th of December, to enter. Uh, at that point, I'll pick a winner at random to receive uh, this ink, and then I'll get it out to you no matter where you're at in the world. Uh, you know, in the past, outside of the U.S., I've had winners from Australia and New Zealand, uh, as well as England and France. Uh, no winners from India, though. There's lots of in entries from India, so uh, eventually someone will win from there. But it is fun to reach out to folks all around the world. So thanks again for watching and thanks for supporting my channel. So in regard to the dual fold, now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Parker Dual Fold Maxima. Uh, there, there again, there is the burgundy, and then here is the uh, uh, the black version. And like I said, they're basically the exactly the same, other than the uh, uh, other than the uh, the nib that's on them. Uh, and actually, now that I'm looking at it, it, looks like some of the band is a little bit different. On this black version, there is uh, a bit of clear section, a clear part on the band, uh, as opposed to the lining going all the way around. But other than that, they're identical. But in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Pilot Metro. Uh, then here it is with a uh, Pelican M1000. Uh, and then here it is with a, uh, a brand new pen that just came out. Uh, most time, most folks were getting it this week, which is the Lamy Ion. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I'm at figboot11. Uh, yeah, what I do is typically on a daily basis, I show the pens that I uh, take to work with me each day, kind of my pen of the day. So these are three pens with it I have scheduled to be a pen of the day for this upcoming week. So first of all, we have a, a Delta Dolce Vita Stantufo Oro. Uh, then we have a Visconti uh, uh, opera metal speedboat uh, and then on Thursday in honor of Star Wars I thought that I would break out the uh, the stormtrooper pen which is the uh, vanishing point here uh, in black and white and this one actually has a, uh, a 1.1 stub on it so uh, I will I will be uh, taking that to work on Thursday the day that the new Star Wars film opens Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Parker Dual Fold Maxima. And this is an oblique nib. And the ink that I'm using here is Waterman. mystery or mysterious blue uh, 
this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's kind of a lighter, kind of a blue with a couple drops of green in it. Uh, I found it to be kind of somewhat similar to Mont Blanc uh, Blue Hour Twilight Blue. Uh, or even something kind of like the, the Toucan Bright Blue, uh, with, but uh, without as much green in it. Uh, but it's a nice color. Uh, this is the bottle that it comes in. Uh, the, the, the Waterman ink is one to, uh, th that's known to be very safe or fairly safe for vintage pens. So if you have a vintage pen with a sack, um, that sometimes there's a question whether some of the modern inks will work with it or corrode it or deteriorate it. Uh, but the, the Waterman inks are known for uh, working well with, uh, with vintage pens. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. And as I mentioned before with an oblique nib, uh, that if we can get a view here, you can kind of see, we'll get a little closer, how the nib is angled down uh, from the uh, sloping down to the left here. So what the result of that is in order to write correctly, you have to twist the nib to the side. So you'd, you'd twist it counterclockwise if it was a left oblique, and if it was a right oblique, then you would have to twist it the other direction. So in regard to this left oblique, let's try a writing sample. Uh, what I find with this oblique is that it kind of forces me to slow down a little bit to make sure that I'm holding it the right way. And you can see that on some of these cross sections, it's fairly skinny, and then it is much thicker on the up and down stroke. Uh, I don't think reverse writing is really going to work on this because actually with, if you reverse wrote, then you would have to turn it the opposite way and turn it into a right oblique, which, nah, that's not working. I didn't think it would. Uh, in regard to ink flow, um, I'd say it's a fairly dry pen. It's not the wettest, but some of that could have, can do with the uh, ink as well. Uh, and in regard to fast writing, uh, I was trying this earlier and it wasn't working too great. I think it was a combination of the dry ink as well as the oblique nib and me learning to write with one, but we'll see. There, I'm doing better now. See, I'm learning. I think I just before didn't quite have the sweet spot. Uh, when you have an oblique nib, that you really have to have a sweet spot in order to um, to, to write with it correctly. If you're off just a little bit, then uh, then you're going to have some trouble, which is what I think I was doing when I was playing around with it a little bit earlier today. But it worked fine there. So there we have the Parker Dual Fold Maxima. Uh, that I want it, to, it's a quality pen. Like I said, it's probably as close to um, a, a Parker that I've really liked, that I've, I've seen before. I want to try out some others. Uh, and I really appreciate my friend Andreas for uh, loaning this to me. So uh, don't forget to enter the contest for the Lamy uh, Petrol Ink. Uh, that, uh, and I appreciate everyone watching, and we'll talk to you later.